Okay. And I am going to stop my video. And do this. All right. Are we re are we good to go? Uh, give me one second to just get it started on Facebook. It'll take you a moment. Sorry. No, no worries. And Ted, I do expect you to pipe in. I will be happy to. <laughs> I had plenty of coffee this morning, so I'm good. All right, so our Facebook live stream is starting and um, we'll, we'll go ahead and get started here. So good morning, everyone. My name is Ted Blank. I am with Travel Leaders Market Square Travel in our um, River Falls, Wisconsin and Woodbury, Minnesota offices. So welcome to our monthly webinar about the rivers of Europe. And so today, um, our host, Mary Margaret with AMA Waterways is gonna take us onto the um, historic Rhine, Mine and Moselle rivers. So Mary Margaret, take it away. And um, I will turn off my video as well and we'll um, get started with the presentation. If you have questions, please feel free to type them in the Q&A and we'll either answer them as they come up, or we might save them to the end, depending on what the what the question is. So, Mary Margaret, please take it away. Thank you so much, Ted, and welcome and good morning. Um, yes, we are going to be on the the Rhine, Main, and Moselle rivers. One of my my favorite journeys, uh, and you'll understand why when you see all the beautiful pictures and towns and villages and cities that we are going to be visiting. But the picture that you're looking at right now is the Rhine Gorge, and as you are on the Rhine, you will spend at least an hour to two hours on in the Rhine Gorge with a dissertation from your cruise manager on all the castles, the towns, the vineyards, and the history that has taken place in the Rhine Gorge. So, and it is a UNESCO World Heritage um, site. So let's get started here. And I'm just gonna give you some introductions to um, Waterways in case you have not been on one of the previous um, virtuals that we've done. But this, this, these are our ships. And one of the things you need to know about Ama Waterways is we own all of our ships and we are debt free. So in the last 10 ships that we have put in the water, they have been paid for in cash. And we just had our inaugural uh, sailing of the Amadelia in Europe absolutely beautiful, beautiful ship. Um, if you've got the time, it is on YouTube. We do have a beautiful YouTube video on it. Uh, and we've also just had the christening of the Ama Siena, right? On August, just oh, to August 28th, actually. So that was, that just took place. And the Ama Lucia will be actually christened next year, all right? But they, Lucia is in the water. So again, yeah, as, as Rudy's quote states, we are debt-free and we own all of our ships. We are family owned and operated. So we're not a big corporate uh, company. Uh, Rudy Schneider, one of our co-founders and president is also known as the godfather of River Cruising. Christine Karnst, another co-founder and our executive vice president. And Gary Murphy um, is one of our co-owners. His father, Jimmy, was one of our co-founders. Uh, and Gary has taken the helm and these owners are hands-on. They don't sit in their white ivory tower dictating to everybody what to do. You will find them boarding our ships unannounced and even asking if they can have breakfast with you, right? Or having a drink with you. And we welcome you into our AMA family. So why River Cruise with AMA Waterways and of course, Market Square, right? So I'm gonna tell you why. Number one, our tours and our tour guides, they are phenomenal. And every time we stop, there's a tour and it is included, all right? And we give you choices. If you remember that choices are free, options cost money. There are no options with Humble Waterways, basically, all right? And they're small groups. They've even gotten smaller now with COVID. Before they were maybe, you know, 15, 18, 19 uh, guests. Well, now they're probably 10, 11, 12 guests in a group, right? We offer our gentle walkers, if you walk a little bit slower, our regular walkers, and what I like to say is our power walkers. They just want to get through the tour, 
and they want to go play or go do something else, right? We also offer bike tours and bike, you can take a bicycle out yourself if you'd like. Every single one of our ships has at least 26 bicycles. The Yama Magnet has more, it has 57 bicycles on that one, but um, all of our regular ships have 56, 26, sorry. So you could sign out for them or you could go part of a bike tour. We also offer hiking excursions. We have hiking sticks if you want that, all right? We offer culinary tours. We offer cooking classes. So again, choices for you to do that. We also offer late risers. So if you want to sleep in, it's your holiday and take, you know, take off, say around uh, oh, 9, 10 o'clock, 10.30, not a problem. We can do that, right? And since 2019, we have also been offering independent tours. So if you want to go up to the front desk and say, you know, I'd rather do this myself, we'll give you a map and some suggestions as what you should see while you are on your self tour and also the time to be back at the ship. Because if you're not back at the ship, uh, it's ship to leave without you and you will be Ubering it to the next destination. We also have a fitness uh, person on board uh, that does yoga, tai chi, uh, aerobics on the sun deck in the morning, especially on beautiful summer mornings, crisp fall mornings. It's wonderful. And if it's not so, whether it's not so conducive, we do them in our lounge area where we move all the, all the chairs and whatever. It's fun. We also have champagne yoga, all right, in the morning. But we have every single one of our uh, ships has a fitness center. So we have uh, fitness classes you can sign up for or you could just go into the fitness center yourself. It's open 24 seven with your um, uh, cabin key. So our wellness host is there to help you. Okay? But I love talking about our food because it's fresh, it's locally sourced. Everything is made on board, um, except for our ice creams that we do get from a Belgian dairy, right? But it, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner is all made on board, even our breads, which I love. <laughs> um, so bre breakfast, we used to be buffet, but we have no more buffets. It's all menu driven. Uh, we also have what we call our action stations, where we may have a omelet station where you can order the omelet of your choice. Uh, we may also have a pancake or a waffle station. You may order whatever you choose. So they're called action stations now, but they're not, it's not buffet at all. It's all you order from, from the table. Uh, lunch is also uh, has the action stations where there might be a specialty, it might be an Italian um, day where we offer pizzas. Uh, might be a um, Chinese day, you know, that type of a thing. But in our, uh, in our lounge area, we will be always having our burgers and brats. Uh, as far as kind of, you can just go up there and if that's what you want. Uh, we also have uh, for lunch, we offer complimentary beer, wine, and soda. It's complimentary. The dinner, the dinner is menu driven and as always. There's usually four items on the menu. But again, if you don't like what's on the menu, we always have our filet, chicken breast, and salmon with our beautiful Caesar salad, as well as uh, our French fries. And I would highly recommend that you order our French fries. Oh, welcome here. French fries are, <laughs> French fries are worth the trip alone. Yes, they are delicious. I do miss them. Um, with dinner, we also have a complimentary beer, wine, and soda. And I want to tell you that your glass is never empty. And I always just tell my husband at dinner, I only had one glass of wine, honey. They just keep filling it, you know? But we also have, before dinner, we have what we call our sip and sail. And that's an hour, hour and a half cocktail hour. It's complimentary. My bartender will have a specialty drink of the evening, but you can order whatever you'd like, right? Um, so again, beer, wine, soda, and the wines are changed on a nightly basis. You have a choice between a red and a white, and they're regional, and they are delicious. They really are. And once during your cruise, you will experience a chef dinner. Right? Rudy was, uh, and our chief chef was 
inducted into inducted, I should say, into uh, Shen back in 2010, and they are adamant that everybody should experience a Shen, and it's the one. It's really an experience. Yeah. We also have, and we're known for, our chef's tables. So every single ship except for the Doro, because they have the alfresco dining, has a chef's table. It's alternative dining. All you have to do is go to the front desk and say, I'd like to have dinner there Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay. And there's, uh, there's no upcharge for that. It's five courses. It's wine paired. And as you can see, the chef cooks your dinner in front of you. And it's delightful. It really is. I highly recommend that you do the, the one night have a dinner at the chef's table. Yeah, it really is. It really is kind of a culinary highlight. And you get to watch the chef make things and he'll explain to you what what he's making and why he's making things. And, you know, a, a multi-course tasting menu at a Michelin quality restaurant like this, you know, probably would cost two or $300 per person if you had it at a restaurant on shore. So it's a great experience and it's included in the cruise fare. Now, if you have an anniversary or a birthday, please tell your advisor at Market Square because we do something special for you. It's always nice to know. And this is one of my favorite slides to tell you about because every single one of our ships in Europe have received the Green Award and we're very proud of that. You know, Rudy has always, when he designs our ship because he's our architect as well, besides our owner, co-owner and president, uh, He's been concerned about the carbon footprint that we're leaving our future generations. And our ships are so fuel efficient that we probably spend more money on our bandwidth to keep you connected to the outside world than we do on our fuel. So again, green award for every single one of them. So where do we go? Well, yes, I'm going to talk about the Rhine, the Mine, and the Danube, which is part of the beautiful rivers of Europe, but we also do Portugal. We have two lovely ships in Portugal on the Douro River. They're smaller ships. They're only 102 passengers, okay? And we also do France, where we have five lovely itineraries uh, on the French rivers. And what's interesting about the French itineraries is that they start on a Thursday and they end on a Thursday. So it's very easy for you guys to do a back-to-back. -back. You're already there. You might as well enjoy north, north of France, the south of France, the western area of France, and Bordeaux. And you can do that very easily with us, right? And of course, we do the Danube as well as the Rhine, Mine, and uh, the Moselle. But at least we do Asia. Right now, it's on a hiatus because of Asia, what's going on there. Uh, but we started Asia uh, in the Vietnam and Cambodia area in 2009. And we do have a lovely ship that is there. Uh, it's only 124 passengers. So if you have the opportunity to look at your calendars for 23 or 22, please take a look at uh, Vietnam and Cambodia. because it's a beautiful destination. But in 2015, we started Africa. And that is definitely a hot destination that is, and is quite different because it's a land as well as a cruise, as well as a safari. So you do go to Cape Town, you can go to Johannesburg. We fly you to Botswana where you spend four nights on a beautiful Zimbisi Queen. It's only 14 suites, right? And you're on the Chobe River and you see all sorts of animals. Then we take you to Victoria Falls for two nights, and then you are on your safari. Or you could do Rovis Rail, where you could you do the, the rail tour, which is kind of a mini safari because you will still see wildlife, and then you go into Johannesburg. Okay? So again, that's such a beautiful itinerary. And we, as I mentioned earlier, on the Amadilia, 72 passengers on the Nile. All right? And we do offer a pre and a post to Dubai, Jordan is our pre, and our post is Israel, right? So, and of course, the Nile is amazing. It's been on my bucket list for, since I've been in seventh grade, so a long time. Me too. <laughs> Absolutely. 
and and seeing the video uh, of the of the ship just yesterday actually uh, just makes me want to go even more. And the ship is beautiful. So, what will you be sailing on these European rivers? Our twin balconies and. They're your floating boutique hotel, basically, all right? They're 443 feet long, all right? And they are the twin balconies. They have your chef's table is in your aft part of the ship. You've got your lounge uh, over here. You've got your walking running track. You've got a swimming pool. You've got a spa, your fitness center. It is your floating hotel, okay? Unpack once. And they are spacious because you've got suites, that range in size from 300 to 350 square feet. Okay. You've got our twin balconies that start at 210 square feet and go 235 square feet. And you've got your, uh, and they also have 18 French balconies, which you see over here that are 170 square feet. Okay. Now, our all of our all of our cabins, all of our staterooms, all right, have. Ident they're identical. Right? They could, the beds could be put together or apart. With our twin balconies, as you can see, you could be sitting inside with a French French door, so you can open it up and be have fresh air, or you could be sitting on the veranda watching the scenery go by. All of our staterooms have mini fridges, which are stocked with multiple bottles of water, and it's all complimentary. Usually, we start you out with three bottles each, okay? But you could have twelve if you want, all right? They all have um, Apple, you know, the Apple TVs, which are your TV, your music, your first run Hollywood movies, as well as your internet. But all of our ships are Wi-Fi. As I mentioned, we spend more money on the bandwidth than we do on fuel. Well, you could be sitting anywhere on our ship and be connected to the world. And it is complimentary 24 seven, right? And we also have a magic drawer in all of our staterooms. That's right here. Yeah? And that magic drawer has a corkscrew, bottle opener, and two wine glasses. Where are you guys? You're in Europe. And you may be on tour, but after the tour, you're going to go explore. And you may find a beer or wine that you can't find in the States, guaranteed, and bring it back. We don't confiscate it when you walk on board. We want you to enjoy it. So we give you the tools to open it, right? We also have triples and quads, right? Our triples are our 235 square foot cabins, right? Which you can see it has a single height of it, okay? And we, our quads are actually in our 350 square foot suites, right? And we also have connecting cabins. So on our nine newest ships, right? We have connecting cabins and there's 12 on each of those ships that connect. And what I like to say is my swan level, there are 160 square feet of cabin space, the, the, the fixed window level, but I want to tell you they have the same amenities as my, my other you know, statements. So again, number of wonderful opportunities for you to have a wonderful home away from home. And one of the questions that comes up that I think we both get from Margaret is around single travelers. Um, uh -huh. So certainly those uh, swan level staterooms lend themselves really well to single yes. travelers and Ama Waterways does, um, does have a lot of promotions where single travelers pay a very low or even waived single supplement. So if you're yep. a single traveler and you're interested, please, please reach out and we can give you more information on that or if you have a group of folks and you might have one or two single single family single travelers as part of your family or as part of your group um, we can definitely work to accommodate them and um, try to avoid some of those punitive single supplements that are out there yes thank you thank you very much for saying that all right so let's let's travel right let's get on board here so we're going to start the Rhine the Mine the Moselle look at all the beautiful city towns and villages that you are going to see on these rivers, all right? Um, Is this the time, Mary Margaret, we tell everybody there's going to be a quiz afterward? <laughs> yes. Yeah, just yes. kidding, just kidding. <laughs> right. <laughs> but in the countries that you are also going to be visiting, from Switzerland to France to Belgium to the Netherlands and Germany, I mean, 
mean, just amazing. Look at all these lovely places that, and you know, the rivers of Europe have always, from the beginning of time, been, you know, the, how people have been able to get their wares. So they have been traveled. They've been, you know, I mean, between the, the crusades and between the manufacturers and, and being able to get to these places, that's how the rivers of Europe have been always um, worked. And with the Mine Danube Canal, when that was finished in 1992, I mean, it started in the 70s, okay? But it was completed in 1992, opened up, I mean, the whole ex of river cruise experience for you. Um, and let's, let's see what we're gonna see. All right, so with us, with Ama Waterways, you can, we're gonna be on the Rhine first, right? So we offer pre and post. So if you're starting in Amsterdam and going to Basel, uh, Zurich, Lucerne would be a post. If you're starting in Basel, it would be a pre. And so we do offer um, Zurich and Lucerne to get started with. So you would fly into Zurich, spend two nights in Zurich, two nights in Lucerne, and then head to Basel. And we also offer, if you are going to be doing the Rhine castles and Swiss Alps itinerary, to offer a pre or a post to Lake Como in Italy. So you would either fly into Milan or fly out of Milan, but Lake Como is absolutely breathtaking. And I like to kind of emphasize that when, when we plan a, a pre-cruise or a post-cruise extension with AMA Waterways, um, there's someone who meets you right at the airport with an AMA yes. Waterways sign. And you know, from the moment you arrive, um, you're very well taken care of. Everything is is taken care of for you. You have some great activities that are included, and you also have plenty of time to explore independently. Um, but you have a traveling, you know, tour cruise manager who travels with you. So it's a really very nice, very high touch experience. Um, they choose some of the best hotels in each market, and um, you know the activities really add to the the fun of it. But you also have time to to do your own thing. Right. And that's one of the Ama Waterways exclusives where your cruise manager will be with you on your pre and will also be with you on your post. So we don't leave you stranded. And always breakfast is included uh, and also a city tour. And we offer you in, in your pre or post, we do offer you optional tours if you wish to do them. Um, otherwise, we, many, many people will just like to do, the, do things on their own. Yes, and whether you are doing the pre-Zurich Lucerne or you're doing the Lake Como, you will visit Lake Lucerne, which is absolutely gorgeous. It is gorgeous. It actually looks like the tourist brochure pictures. <laughs> yeah, it does. So then you end up in Basel and Basel is such a cosmopolitan city where it's an old and the new. And we dock right where uh, you get off uh, of our ship, you could actually walk into the kind of the old city of Basel. And it is a beautiful, beautiful city. It has art fairs, um, lots of things to do. And if you're doing a Christmas market in Basel, it is amazing. Yes, beautiful, beautiful city. And many people who live in France or in Germany work in Basel, right? Because again, Switzerland. Right, right on the border of Germany, yes. Switzerland and France. Yes, you're right there. And then we take off on the Rhine, we're gonna to go to Bearish. And with Bearish, you're gonna have some choices again. So you could do a bike tour uh, and you can have to kind of choose because I'm gonna give you some cho choices here. You're gonna choose Bearish where you could do a walking tour. Uh, you could do a bike tour or you could also choose Freiburg. And Freiburg has a beautiful cathedral there with the most beautiful spires. That, um, of course, that's what the city of Freiburg says. You know, some people might say, well, the fires in, in Paris or someplace else are more beautiful, but they are gorgeous. They are quite different. And again, you can have a walking tour of this particular place, or we also offer a tour to the Black Forest, which is kind of fun. And this is where, if you have the desire to buy a cuckoo clock, that is where you will buy it. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, the black 
So here's here's a piece of trivia for you, Mary Margaret. Um, okay. Freiburg has a large university, and so oh. its sister city in the United States is Madison, Wisconsin. Really, I did yeah. not know that. Thank well, you. Not the last time I was there. <laughs> How about that? All right. Then from Freiburg, we're going to go into France, into Ripalda, and this little town is what Ned. Do you know what it's to take off of? Who copied this town in what, what Disney movie? Do you remember? So this was in the live action Beauty and the Beast, right? Yes, it was. <laughs> Absolutely. Beauty and the Beast is when uh, the Disney crew saw this town, they said, ah, oh, this is what we're gonna we're gonna uh, build Beauty and the Beast around. So yes, and it is a beautiful, beautiful little town. It's a I, I love this little little town. It's got great little shops. It's also got great little cheeses and, and wines. Uh, yep, you can't see it, but it's completely surrounded by vineyards. So all those Alsatian Rieslings and stuff yes. are, are oh. grown oh. and created right there in Reek there. Yes, it is part of the Alsace region, all right? And it is known for the tart method. So again, when I said little shops, it's also known for its food. Which you have to stop and taste, of course. You can also have a French version of Black Forest cake there. Oh, that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Hmm, interesting. Next time I'm there, I'll have to try it. I've always tried their pretzels because of them. Pretzels. And the yeah, it's such, a, it's such an interesting combination because it used yeah. to be, it's been part of both France and Germany. So you have kind of a half yep. French, half German feel to the town. Yep. And you know, as we go into Strasbourg, again, that's, again, it was part of Germany. Originally, it was German, like with Rickwald, it was Germany. And then it decided to become France. Then it became Germany. Um, and during the war, World War II, it was actually part of Germany. And then it turned on to France. But again, the Alsace region, beautiful wines. And in Strasbourg, we do offer you a bike tour. We offer you wine tasting. We offer you ch choices again of just a walking tour. It's an amazing place. So beautiful, it really truly is. And it has a beautiful cathedral, which people just, I mean, it's one of the most visited other than Notre Dame in Paris. It is one of the most vi visited cathedrals in, in all of France. And because it was German, and France, it's got this cross section. So you can taste the foods that can be, have a little French flair, but also a very much German. Like for an example, the sauerkraut, it's known for that. I mean, amazing. And it's also known for foie gras. So you really can- Oh, um, yeah. And you could bring that back to the ship if you want. You can, yes. Yes, yes. yes. And we actually serve that at, on the ship as well. But yes, you can bring back back that and I'm, I've known people who could bring it back into the States. So, And then we give you some more choices. We don't sail into Heidelberg, all right, or Spire, but you can make it a choice. You can either go visit Heidelberg or you could visit Spire. And with Heidelberg, of course, you've got the university here. You've got a beautiful, beautiful walking town, or you could also visit the castle and you could do a castle tour. And we also offer a philosopher's hike uh, on this particular journey, okay? Now, if you've, this is if you've chosen Heidelberg. Now, you could have chosen fire, and this is the only Romanesque cathedral in all of Germany. So it is quite lovely. And it also has a lovely, well, I shouldn't say lovely, it's a historic, uh, air museum to visit all the various different yeah. airplanes We're interested in airplanes or cars or trains there's quite an incredible museum there in Speyer yeah. today. yes and then we head to Rudesheim and as my, my see, favorite place on the right <laughs> it is one of mine as well not only because of the vineyards that are there and the wine that is there and the wine tour that you can get and you could ride a gondola on beautiful days, we can ride a gondola and you get a wine tour um, and a wine lecture, actually. You can choose that. Or you could choose Rudersheim coffee. 
and you will get that anyway on our ship. But to see how it's actually made is an art, right? It's, it is, and that's the special cup. And you can purchase that cup if, if you would like in, in Rudersheim. But um, it's coffee with Aschenbach brandy and whipped cream. It's lit, right? You, they light it on fire. They put the whipped cream and the chocolate on top. It is absolutely lovely. And we do, as we travel in the wine, Rhine Gorge, you are served that, all right? On board. The fireproof cup. Yeah, with a fireproof cup. They yes. do light it on fire. <laughs> yes, they do, absolutely. Or you can choose Siegfried's Botanical Museum. Now, don't you laugh because it is amazing. I mean, this is a privately owned museum. Um, this family has collected music boxes from all over the world and all ages. I mean, they've got music boxes from Egypt back in the Egyptian times of BC where they have re rebuilt them it is quite interesting. You know, the first time I was there, I thought, oh, okay, I'll do this. I was with, I happened to have be with my mom at the time and she was interested in this and I thought, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do this. But boy, I wanna tell you, it is the most fascinating museum. It's, it, and to listen to the music boxes of all these ages that have gone by and it's, yeah, it's really a truly a cool place and music box is really kind of a difficult term some of these are like the size of a small room yeah you know they have right. mechanical yeah. mannequins and they play you know you, you have mechanical violins that play the blue danube waltz and stuff and yeah it's it's quite incredible technology that was that was used in these kind of in the age before electricity some of them even absolutely absolutely and you know just because we're giving you all these choices, that doesn't mean that say you finish this you, the tour of the museum, we still give you time to walk the beautiful town of um, oh, Rudersheim. Uh, uh, Thank you, Rudersheim, my mind went a little and, and have a, a Rudersheim coffee on your own, you know, if you want. So again, it's it's not just go, 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 go. No. It's, it's at a relaxed uh, pace as well. And again, as I said, we do the two to two and a half hour on, on the Rhine Gorge. And again, you will receive your Wittesheim coffee, even if it's in the, in the morning or in the afternoon, you will. And it's quite a, quite a sight. It's, it, it, and I cannot explain it in putting words how delightful it is to sit on the sun deck on a beautiful, beautiful day and just watch these beautiful castles and towns uh, go by. Yeah. And it's amazing the seamanship that they, they have because the river gets quite narrow and quite windy. Uh -huh. And yes. um, it's incredible to watch these ships navigate through there. Yes. Then we head to Cologne. And again, Cologne known for its cathedral, beautiful cathedral. And it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So you are going to see many of them along the, uh, many of the rivers of Europe that UNESCO uh, World Heritage Sites. But you, uh, in Cologne, we do offer, oops, sorry, I was going to give you, we offer a bike tour, we offer a walking tour, we offer a culinary tour where we take you into this lovely restaurant and you all have potato pancakes, applesauce, and croche beer because that's where it's made, right? Um, or you, if you choose, you can walk over because where we dock is almost right next door to a chocolate factory. I like to say it's the Willy Wonka chocolate factory. <laughs> <laughs> and you could go over there and uh, see how the chocolate's made as well. So many things to do in in uh, in Cologne. And definitely the Cologne Cathedral is is you know you oh. sometimes you can get a little churched out when you're in Europe, but this one is absolutely worth seeing. It's it's incredible. It's immense. Um, okay. It contains the relics of the three magi, and part of the um, cathedral floor is actually paved with uh, Meissen pottery, so uh, Meissen porcelain. So it's really an incredible, um, incredible experience, both from the inside and the outside. It is, and if you are adventuresome enough and just want to do the cathedral, you could also go and climb climb the spires if you'd like. No elevator. No elevator. No, but you know, no actually, that, 
we we did um we did maybe we didn't mention but the ships do have an elevator on board oh yes sorry yes they do and our nine newest ships have an elevator that actually go down to the uh the swan level okay so now we're going to try the mine river okay and this is uh, again a lovely river where you are going to see Wertheim and, and Wurstburg and uh, you know Bottenberg, Bomberg. Sorry, uh, it's just a, it's a, and if you will go through the Mine Danube Canal at that point, right? So let's go. And in Mays, this this town is home of the Guggenheim Museum. And what, on one of the tours, if you choose this, is you will actually see how the original um, printing press worked. And maybe you might be one of the volunteers that gets to do a little sampling of printing, right? And also in this lovely, lovely city are the Chicago windows, St. Stephen's Church, which are absolutely beautiful. Absolutely. They're breathtaking. You could just stand there for hours and look at them. And then we hit Miltenberg and Wertheim, where we will visit this lovely castle. And maybe do some wine tasting there as well. You never know. But it's pretzel making time. And that's, I mean, I did this. This was a fun, fun journey uh, tour that I did. And I had such a great time making pretzels. Because I, you know, obviously you're in Europe, and I have to taste the German pretzels. Well, mm, let me tell you, but mine was good. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 but not opening a pretzel store. Let's put it that way. It's one of those things that you never, never can quite duplicate at home, right? Right. Absolutely. <laughs> in the water. Right. And then there's Wurstburg, and this, one of the unique things about Wurstburg is that people will sit on this bridge. They watch the barges and the and the ships go by, but uh, and get lunch and and wine and sit on the sit on the bridge and have their lunch with a with a bottle of you know what wine that they're sharing. But those two buildings right at the base are actually um, wineries, oh. so you can actually go in there. Um, and one of the things we also do is we visit the Wurstburg residence, which is absolutely it's. A kind of a Byzantine type of uh, architecture, but it's absolutely beautiful. The gardens alone are gorgeous. And then we go into Rottenburg, which is one of the cities that you will absolutely visit. Our travel and leisure might have named Rothenburg as one of the top most beautiful or most picturesque German cities, so it's quite, quite beautiful. Yeah. Makes me want to be there. Bird houses and stuff. And then there's Bomberg. Ah, yes. And with Bomberg, you have smoked beer. All right. And we do a beer tasting. And of course, pretzels, of course. Yeah. Protecting the theme here. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a theme here in Germany, right? <laughs> um, yes, there's there's the wines, of course, but there's also the beer. And now, I'm not a beer drinker, but I have to taste. You know, my husband said to me, you have to taste it. And it was definitely smoked. I mean, it de definitely had that smoky taste. But Moselle, one of my most favorite, I love this river. It is so beautiful. And you see these vineyards, as I've said to Ted many a times, I, I, every time I'm on the Moselle and I look at the vineyards that we are passing, I want to know how they do this because they are so steep. Gravity tells me I'm going to fall, but <laughs> obviously they don't. And as we were talking earlier, they're definitely not going to get any um, mechanical machines up there. They're going to do this hand-picked, I guess. But it's Moselle is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful river. And it also goes into France. And you will have uh, Luxembourg. You will have Trier, which is in Germany. But um, Kokum and Koblenz, just beautiful little cities. And of course, Kokum is known for its mustard. And we do visit this beautiful castle. 
Some people might bike up there, but some people will just take a, a the bus. <laughs> and in Kokum, as I mentioned, mustard. And it, what I like to do, I mean, and I talk about wines, I talk about beer, I talk about you know the mustards, etc. Um, and I'll talk about the jellies when we're in um, Dernstein. But I always love to line my suitcase with bubble wrap. I put my, my clothes in, I cover them with the bubble wrap, right? And throw in some you know, masking tape, duct tape, whatever, um, because I know if I'm going to be in Kolkham, I'm gonna buy mustard. If I'm in Rudersheim, I'm going to buy apricot jelly, or I'm going to buy a bottle of wine, and I wanna take it home with me. So I wrap it in my bubble wrap, and it comes home safely. It's just kind of an insider tip. And then we visit the Brooks. Well, again, you'll have a choice. You don't have to do this, but we give you some choices. We'll uh, visit the castle, which is where Richard the Lion Hearted was at one time. And Trier, one of the oldest cities in Germany and very much Roman influence. Absolutely, as you can see, this, this actually was at one time um, part of the Colosseum. And you will find the Roman influence all over this area. Absolutely. Um, beautiful. It's a quite, quite an interesting, interesting city because you will also have right next door to Luxembourg, right? And Luxembourg is also part of the wine region of the Moselle. So the vineyards kind of go not only in the, both Luxembourg as well as into uh, Germany. Right? So you've got some beautiful, beautiful wines and you will also have the opportunity to visit uh, the um, Battle of the Bulge. Okay? But the what wines that you will find on the Moselle area is the Rieslings because of the steepness, the beauty of the, that wine. But you will also, Little did I know is that they also make a delicious dry Riesling. No, I'm not really into the very sweets. Dry Riesling, I just love the dry Riesling. Didn't realize that. Yes. Yes. But, but such an interesting contrast, you know, between a Roman amphitheater and the Battle of the Bulge. Yes. You know, when the, yes. the amount of history that the that, that because the rivers were, as you mentioned, such a source of, you know, that's how people got around and how much history and how many centuries of history is it? Not even centuries, millennia of history is all kind of compacted into one little little yeah. town can be quite amazing. It is amazing. And if you are at all interested in tasting a dry Riesling that comes from the Moselle region that I know you guys can get at Total Wine, it's called, it's called Slate. The name of it is called Slate, and it is comes from the Moselle region, and it's a, it's a very delightful dry Riesling. But then let's visit Amsterdam. Yes. <laughs> Who doesn't love Amsterdam? All roads lead to Amsterdam. Right? All roads lead to Amsterdam. You got it. Absolutely. Um, you know, in Amsterdam, we, we do a pre and we do a post, right? Maybe not today, but we do a pre and a post in Amsterdam. Um, Amsterdam has got museums. I mean, it's just, it's a beautiful walking city. We, um, we do a, a culinary tour there where we taste the, the, the cheeses and, and the liqueurs of, of the Netherlands in, in Amsterdam. We do a, a, a canal tour, right? So again, lots of opportunities. And I would highly recommend that um, you spend a few days in Amsterdam, either pre or post. Highly recommended. And we go through a couple of beer things. They've got the, Heidel, the Heineken Museum as well and learn how to really pour beer and be certified. Now, in 2022, in Almere, Netherlands, um, there is going to be the Floriade. And it starts on... April 14th, and it ends October 9th. And if you are visiting Amsterdam, 
with us, whether it be on a captivating rhyme, an enchanted rhyme, a tulip time, a um, rhyme castles and Swiss Alps, whatever journey starts or ends in Amsterdam between those dates, you will have the opportunity to visit the Floriad because we have tickets. So it's a half day at the Floriad. Um, and it is a, 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 a horticultural expo that happens every 10 years, okay? And it's happening, as I said, April 14th to April to October 9th in 2022. Ted mentioned earlier about our solo travelers. Well, we are doing a special for solo travelers for balcony staterooms, because normally we don't offer balcony staterooms at a discount. Well, we are. It's 25% only of the double rate. Um, so again, it's an opportunity, but that does end September 30th. So, touch base with your travel advisor at Market Square. We do offer back-to-backs, as I mentioned, France. Well, we can actually do back-to-backs that may include France and the Rhine, France and the Danube, we may do the Danube and the Rhine. We might do the Moselle, the Rhine, the Main rivers. We can do that. We give you a 10% savings on your second cruise, okay? Plus you will get your past passenger discount on your second cruise or third cruise or fourth cruise, whatever it happens to be, uh, which is $100 per person, right? And whatever other specials that we're offering on that particular itinerary and date, okay? And it's, it's a wonderful opportunity since you're already in Europe, you can do this. So even if you say you start in France, say you do the, the, um, the beaches where you do Paris to Paris, beach, the Paris to Normandy. Uh, Normandy to day landing beaches. Yes. Um, then you wanna do the South of France. So you wanna do the Essence. So you, you can start either in Isles or you can start in Paris and go down to, to, to uh, Salon. You can do the south of France or you can do Bordeaux. And then we can also take you onto the Rhine or the Danube. So we actually talk with your uh, travel advisor at Market Square because uh, we have a, all this in our computer system where it works to your advantage. Even if you take a couple of days and it's not a total back-to-back, -back, one right after the other, and you want to visit a certain city, that still counts with us as a back-to-back. And we are still offering for 2023. We've extended this 5% uh, savings. Uh, and that goes until September 30th. On any new booking that you would make for 2023. And, you know, this seems like a good time to um, yeah. mention that the interest in river cruising in 2022 is really off the charts. So um, if, if you are thinking about going in 2022, it is definitely not at all too late to start planning. And in fact, um, you know, we would wanna have a couple options to, to look at because many cruises are already sold out. And so 2023 is already available for booking. And so 2022 turns out to be not, um, not you know, the, the availability doesn't work out with what you're looking for. Um, certainly we can already look to 2023 and this is absolutely a good time to do that. And, you know, I think, by the time we come back in November and December to do these monthly events, we'll be probably talking about how full 2023 is. Yep, you got it. <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of people have a lot of interest in travel, and um, yes. so yeah, and some of them have put uh, put their travel on hold for 21. Yeah, just because. Yeah. yeah. But however, you know, that, that's another thing we should definitely mention is that um, Am Waterways is operating right now. Oh yeah. In Europe, Absolutely. on the Rhine and the Danube and the Douro, and so. Um, and in I've France. Had, yeah, I've had yep. clients go and, and come back and have a great time, um, and you know, definitely we we can help with COVID protocols where appropriate, but um, river cruising is going on right now. Yep. And we do have some wonderful new itineraries that you could look at for 23. Uh, these are on the Danube, which I did not talk about, but um, two itineraries, if, if you love music, um, the celebrate classical music, it's a seven night cruise, or the Majestic Capitals, which is a five night cruise, all right? Um, and then we have 
we've added uh, Krakow for a pre and a post, if you're doing Budapest, and also Salzburg as a pre and a post. So again, two new land packages for 23. But what is really interesting and exciting for me, because if you're a Christmas market junkie, we have never done the South Danube for, for the um, Christmas markets or winter markets. And that's our gems, which goes from Budapest down to Jiru. Amazing. I'm so excited about this one for 23. So we, we have been, Mary Margaret and I have been doing these uh, webinars every month. And so coming up next month on October 6th, we're actually gonna take a more in-depth look at 2023. And then on December 7th, we're actually gonna look at that gems of the um, Southeast Europe, which is Croatia, Romania, uh, I'm sorry, Serbia, Romania, uh, Hungary, and also the Christmas market cruises in that part of Europe, which are totally different than the Christmas markets in Central Europe. That's right, they are. Um, and we are doing, again, for your Christmas market junkie, <laughs> we are doing 14 nights. So you could start in Wilshoven and go all the way down to Giru, right, in um, Romania, right? Or you can start there and go all the way over to Wilshoven. So 14 nights of beautiful Christmas winter markets. Ah. Yes. Now, one of the things that, you know, I talk about our back-to-backs, but one of the things that we are offering is a Seven River Journey. And we, this is for 23, okay? Where you will have 46 nights, 14 countries, seven rivers. And we offer a spring, summer, and autumn journey, okay? So spring and summer, summer is especially, there's limited op opportunities for you to, to, to book that. There's still a, a few spaces left. Spring is a, but I think it has 13 cabins left. But the, the autumn one is, is fairly wide open. We just, we just introduced this one because of the demand. And I mean, to me, autumn is, is, is the one I would like to. So it'd be like taking a world cruise, but staying on one continent. Yes. And remember, you can really work anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you've already, you're already there. It, it would just be incredibly immersive and, and the diversity of what you would see would be in, yes. incredible. I, yes. If I had the time, I would absolutely do this. Uh, I have to too. wait a few years until I'm retired, but. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> so again, this is where you, you're going to be going from, you know, starting in, in the France, in, in, in France and going all the way down into uh, to Jiru. And so these are, this is what you're gonna be um, doing as far as the countries. I mean, it's almost like doing the historic rivers, all of them at once. And as I said, internet, complimentary, Wi-Fi, you could work anywhere, okay? And we take- That's a really good point. Everything. I'll have to keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, and, and we take care of everything for you. You know, all the, I think I did this. Um, so you've got the epic, the uh, autumn starts um, August 24th, it goes to October 10th, okay? You can do a pre-cruise, which is additional uh, in Paris and a post-cruise in Transylvania, Romania, or Istanbul. Can you imagine? Ah, that's a hard one, for me. Istanbul or Transylvania. I've never been to Transylvania. Almost, it's almost Halloween, so I might skip Transylvania. <laughs> Funny, you are cute. All right, and then, but this is what's included, guys. It's everything. You have one cruise manager for the whole time, right? The gratuities, everything is included. All your gratuities for your shore excursions, your, your onboard excursion, your transfers between all the three ships that you'll be on for this particular one, right? You've got special entrances that we are doing for you, special concerts, such special tours, special lunches, special dinners, right? At various different places. You've got complimentary laundry service. So you don't have to bring 20 suitcases, right? And um, you've got your, your beer, wine, soda, you know, an hour cocktail party prior to every, you know, every dinner. So again, 
It's, it's an amazing, amazing journey. And because you're on board with us today, if you book any new I'm a water waste cruise for 21, 22, or 23. And I'm going to say including our seven rivers, right? By September 28th, you'll have, receive an additional $100 per person discount. Okay. So again, this is over and above whatever else might be going on with that particular itinerary. And we have... Um, our entry requirements, we, it's all on our website. Um, your, uh, your Market Square Travel Advisor can also send you these links very definitely. And as of August 1st, every guest, crew, and staff must be fully vaccinated. Right? So, yeah. And we have been sailing since July 3rd. So I'm, both Ted and I are open for questions. Well, one question, Mary Margaret, that was asked on Facebook was about um, accessibility for handicapped folks. Could you talk a little bit about kind of what, what accessibility exists and where there are, um, where Europe is a little different than the United States? Yeah, it is a lot, it is a lot different than the United States. Um, we do have elevators, right? We do, you can reserve we, on every single one of our ships, we do have a motorized um, cart, right? That you can you can uh, request. Otherwise, if that is taken, we can we can get one where you could rent one for the week, right? Uh, but you need to remember that Europe is not ADA. It has the curbs. It has the cobblestones. It doesn't have um, the physically challenged entries. To various different places, museums, churches, etc. Um, so it's it's not the same as the United States. We do try and accommodate you. Um, my, we do require though if you are wheelchair bound that you do bring somebody that can push you, right? That's capable of pushing you. Um, but as I mentioned, uh, and again, if you choose to stay on board and on the sun deck or wherever. Um, you are, be our guest. Um, but Europe is different than the United States. It is. Yep. But, yeah. yeah. But we do try and accommodate you. Uh, we do not have, uh, our ships are not handicap accessible as far as the state ones. So if that answers yep. your question. Yep. Thank you. That's a good answer. Um, so we, we talked about it a little bit before everybody joined the webinar, but in terms of time of times of year to travel, on the um, you know the Rhine, the Danube, the, the Central European rivers. Um, what's your advice to folks on what are the best times to go? Well, I guess I'm. Um, I I love these as we we talk the shoulder seasons. Any time between when we start sailing mid March to mid June, because the crowds aren't there, right? And from say towards the end of October to the first of the year. And we do sail on to, to New Year's. Um, and that's a wonderful cruise to be on New Year's Eve, let me tell you. Um, just again, because of the crowds. And you talk about weather. Well, the one thing that we are, we're very fortunate in the Midwest, if you take a look at a globe, you know, and you go, you take the, the Minnesota area, you take the Wisconsin, the Iowa, the Illinois area, and you, you go into Europe, we're on the same hemisphere type of uh, so the weather patterns are pretty much the same, pretty similar. Yeah. pretty similar, but I would have to say that I don't believe that between, you know, Thanksgiving and New Year's, uh, the winters are as severe as they are in the Chicago area or in even in the Minnesota mm -hmm. area. They aren't because I've been there at that time and, it, it, and I live in the Chicago area, so I know what the winters are like here. And you could have some flurries and some cool days. Yes, you're not absolutely. Yes. Maybe in the Alps, right? but yeah. 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 So, so a lot of people will ask me what, what is my favorite river cruise? And I always yeah. tell them it's a little bit like picking which of your children is your favorite child. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the cruises on the Rhine and the Danube certainly are the most popular uh, for people who have never taken a river cruise before. Yeah. 
Um, but once you've taken one river cruise, I, I guarantee you, you'll be hooked. And so then a lot of folks will take the other one. If they've taken the Rhine, they'll take the Danube or vice versa. But then it really is neat to see these little less traveled routes like the one we covered today, the Moselle and the Mine. Um, yes. You know, get combine some of the top attractions like Strasbourg and Cologne with some much more off the beaten path uh, destinations. So great option if you've never cruised before, river cruised, you know, taken a river cruise before. Um, and if you have, it definitely is going to take you to some new territory that's that's worth exploring. So uh, yes, yep. And so I don't see any more questions in the chat. So okay. I think we'll wrap up since it's noon, and I just heard my noon siren go off. <laughs> oh dear! Uh, but thank you so much, Mary Margaret. Some great You're information. So Very much appreciate it. And my we pleasure. Have, our next event will be coming up on October sixth, which is a Wednesday. Um, and we'll be looking ahead to the 2023 season. So we'll take a more in-depth look at those cruises that Mary Margaret teased us with a little bit earlier. Sounds wonderful. All Great. right. Well, thanks so much. I did type um, contact information into the chats. If you have any questions, please reach out to your advisor here at Travel Leaders or um, reach out to me directly. And we're happy to help you and um, answer questions and get a river cruise booked for you. So you've got that to look forward to and look forward to in 2022 for 2023. So Absolutely. thanks for joining us. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye.